Point of order, the, the uh, Deputy Host. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I believe you will find that we have unanimous consent to pay tribute to Her Majesty the Queen becoming our longest serving monarch with a representative from each caucus speaking for up to five minutes. Here, here. The Deputy House Leader is uh, seeking unanimous consent. I believe we believe we have unanimous consent to pay tribute to Her Majesty the Queen becoming our longest serving monarch with a representative from each caucus speaking up to five minutes. Do we agree? We agree. Agreed. Carry. Premier. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and it's with great pleasure that I rise to mark the historic milestone Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has achieved in surpassing her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria, as the longest reigning British monarch. With Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, I am very proud to speak in this historic moment of the reign of Her Majesty Elizabeth II, who has passed the record of her antecessor, Queen Victoria, and has become the British Queen that has the longest reign. Now, for the steadfast devotion to duty and public service that she's exhibited during an extraordinary reign of more than 63 years. The Queen has carried out her responsibilities with grace, with dignity and intelligence, earning respect and admiration across the Commonwealth and around the world. Canadians have shown their great esteem and affection for Her Majesty during her many visits to our country. She has made Canada a priority in her international travel, traveling here more times than to any other country. And she has been a frequent and welcome visitor to Ontario, making 14 visits to our province since 1951. Wonderful. During, during these visits, the Queen has shown a preference for participating in events that celebrate selfless service to others. In 1973, she attended the first ever Ontario Medals for Good Citizenship. And during her most recent visit to Canada in 2010, she joined Premier McGuinty here at Queen's Park for a celebration of service, honouring outstanding achievements in volunteerism and other forms of giving back to society. The most visible element of the Queen's visits are royal walkabouts, when she meets and mingles with members of the public. These walkabouts began spontaneously during the 1939 Royal Tour of Canada by Her Majesty's parents after they had dedicated the National War Memorial in Ottawa. The royal couple surprised and delighted the vast crowd when, instead of turning to their uh, motorcade, they spent half an hour mingling with veterans of the First World War. During her reign, Queen Elizabeth has institutionalized walkabouts, developing them into a much-loved tradition. I am speaking about walkabouts today because of their symbolic importance. Earlier generations typically perceived a king or a queen as a remote figurehead, but the advent of walkabouts has helped to forge a connection between the monarch and her people, and has reflected the democratic age, a spirit of our age. Yet at the same time, they strike a careful balance by also respecting the dignity that is integral to the high office the Queen holds. Her Majesty has done an exemplary job of maintaining the monarchy, which is one of the pillars of our democracy. By doing so, she has helped to sustain the combination of parliamentary democracy and a constitutional monarchy that we're so fortunate to live under. Our system of government, which has evolved over many centuries, has allowed Canada to become a vibrant and stable democracy and one of the world's most successful nations. It ensures that the power of the state is not absolute, that peace, order and good government endure, and that as citizens we can take control of our destiny and live without fear of tyranny. The Queen has steered a steady course for more than 63 years. She has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to public service, and she has upheld the monarchy as a symbol of stability and continuity. La Reine a maintenu le cadre depuis The Queen has led the way for more than 63 years, and she has shown uh, serv public service at its utmost and maintained the monarchy as a symbol of stability.
poise, strength and integrity have offered the people of Canada and the 15 other Commonwealth countries where she is the head of state a source of reassurance and stability in a time of unprecedented change. On behalf of the Government of Ontario, I want to congratulate the Queen for achieving this significant milestone, and I want to thank Her Majesty for her lifetime of dedicated service to the people of our province and our country, and to wish her many more years in her remarkable reign. God save the Queen. Thank you very much. The Leader of Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. Mr. Speaker, nothing can be more fitting for my first act as Leader of Her Majesty's Official Opposition than to stand and pay tribute to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II on this historic occasion. Reigning as Queen for 63 years and 221 days, Her Majesty now stands as the longest-serving monarch of the United Kingdom and our Commonwealth. Along with the people of Ontario and our Progressive Conservative Caucus, I express my deep and profound appreciation for Her Majesty's devotion of so much of her life to public service and the greater good. It's next to impossible to put into perspective the sheer length of her service and dedication to her kingdom, but just to try, when she was crowned in 1953, Leslie Frost was Premier of Ontario and the very first Keller television sets went on sale. When I was born, Her Majesty had already been serving as head of state for 25 years and has since served with dedication and distinction. It is my hope that we can all follow her lead and example of integrity. Her Majesty the Queen has been the head of our country through some of our nation's most iconic and momentous occasions. It was Her Majesty, through the Governor General, who granted royal assent to Prime Minister Diefenbaker's Bill of Rights, finally passing into law some of our most inalienable rights, freedom of speech, equality, the right to life and liberty. 22 years later, it was Her Majesty who personally signed the Constitution Act on Parliament Hill, bringing the Constitution to Canada, finally granting our country complete sovereignty. During her reign as Queen of Canada, she has travelled internationally as head of state and visited our country 24 times on royal tours. It was during one of these state visits in 2010 that I had the pleasure and honour of taking my father, who was born in London, England during the Second World War, and moved to Canada when Her Majesty was beginning her reign, to meet her. My father often recounts how, during the Second World War, when it ended, his parents were among the thousands who gathered outside of Buckingham Palace, awaiting the royal family, including then Princess Elizabeth, and how the strength and leadership shown by King George VI and the Queen Mother brought light to the world during a very dark time. How fitting then for almost 64 years, Her Majesty has served as their enduring symbol of freedom and democracy. While we as politicians sometimes carry on with partisan banter, Her Majesty and the principles she represents remain above it all. She is above politics and partisanship. She stands as a symbol of security and unwavering leadership. She stands as a reminder of all of us, not just to our past, but to our future. Her Majesty brings great pride to the Commonwealth. Again, Mr. Speaker, I thank you for the opportunity to stand here on my first day in the Ontario Legislature to honour Her Majesty, a remarkable and inspirational leader. I congratulate her on this tremendous accomplishment and, on behalf of the Progressive Conservative Caucus, wish her many more years of good health and dutiful service. God save the Queen. The leader of the third party. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I would like to actually start by welcoming Patrick Brown, the new leader of the Conservative Party, uh, to the um, chamber. On behalf of the Ontario NDP caucus, I am honoured to rise and pay our respects to Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who on September 9, 2015, became the United Kingdom's longest-serving sovereign. On the occasion of her Diamond Jubilee, Her Majesty said, and I quote, we are reminded here of our past, of the continued, continued, 
continuity. She didn't stutter on it, though, Speaker. Uh, we are re reminded here of our past, of the continuity of our national story, and the virtues of resilience, ingenuity, and tolerance which created it. And at a reign of 63 years and just over seven months, the Queen has been a part of our national story for as long as many Ontarians can even remember. She has worked with 12 British Prime Ministers and 11 Canadian Prime Ministers. And as the living embodiment of the Crown in Canada, she has been a proud and stoic figure. Through ever-changing times, she has ruled with equanimity and dignity, and she has remained above the fray of politics. There is no doubt that Canadians remain fascinated by the Queen and her royal family. On each of Her Majesty's 22 visits to Canada, thousands of Canadians flocked to catch a glimpse of the Queen. There is no doubt that Canada's monarchy continues to hold a special place in the hearts and minds of Canadians. In fact, I can remember her in Hamilton in the year of the Queen's Golden Jubilee in October of 2002, when she presented the new colours to her Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders of Canada, Princess Louise's. At that time, she noted the regiment's gift to the community in my riding of a commemorative pavilion in Bayfront Park to remember those who served and especially those who gave their lives. It is also notable that Queen Elizabeth was not only quick to write to the family and regiment to share her grief and sorrow at the tragic shooting of Cap Corporal Cirillo, but several months later held an audience with members of his Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders regiment, including Lieutenant Colonel Lawrence Hatfield, Lieutenant Colonel Rick Kennedy, and Honorary Colonel Ron Foxcroft. You know, since her youngest days, the Queen has made it clear that her role is one of service to her people. And so I'll close with a very short and succinct quote by Her Royal Majesty. There is a motto which has been borne by many of my ancestors, a noble motto, I serve. I think that should be an important reminder for all of us who represent the people of Ontario, for all of us who are privileged to stand in this place. And we would do well to follow the example of Her Majesty, who at the age of 89 still holds more than 400 public engagements each and every year. In fact, the Premier uh, talked about her walkabouts. Uh, personally, I have to say that um, I love her dogs. Every time I see a corgi, I think of Her Majesty, and I think many people uh, are of the same opinion. Uh, we would always do well, in fact, to uh, follow Her Royal Majesty's example and remember that public life should be a life of service to the people and that public service truly is a noble cause. On behalf of the Ontario NDP caucus, I wish Her Royal Majesty Queen Elizabeth II good health and long life in the continuation of her service to the people of the United Kingdom, Canada, and beyond. God save the Queen. I, uh, I thank all members for their heartfelt and kind comments. Uh, I will make arrangements to have our comments and a copy of our comments uh, delivered to Buckingham Palace with our gratitude and our deep appreciation in the whole house. I uh, do share with you, I was uh, very blessed to be the coordinator of the Queen's visit long before I became a politician, and I can tell you, one classy lady. Thank you.